Hello student, this is Om Prakash Yadav. Today I am going to start gear. In subsequent lecture, I will complete complete gear and gear train. Okay, let us start gear. So first heading is friction, wheel and gear. Let us see what is the origin of gear. How the idea of gear has come. Let us start from there. So, initially we are using the friction wheel, then I have come up to the gear. So, first of all, let us see what is the gear, what is the friction, what is the friction wheel. So, let us see what is the friction wheel. I am taking this one cylinder and in contact with one, this is the another cylinder and forcefully they are in contact with each other so there is a normal pressure between these two cylinder normal pressure between these two cylinder so when i will rotate to the cylinder one when i will rotate to the cylinder one so when when the cylinder will be rotated when this cylinder will be rotated so this will apply a frictional force on this cylinder in downward direction when this cylinder will be rotated so a frictional force will be applied on this cylinder in the downward direction. Friends, this cylinder will rotate. So force is downward on this cylinder. So this cylinder also start rotating in this direction. Okay, so what you are looking at, when uh, one of the cylinder is rotated, then second cylinder also starts rotating. So this is because of what? This is because of the frictional force. So that's why we are saying this two as a friction cylinder. So what is the friction cylinder? If two cylinder in contact can transmit motion force from one to another with the direct contact, then that is known as the friction cylinder. That is known as the friction cylinder. Achha, let us see. So what? Yeah, how much power can be transmitted from this friction cylinder? So if the normal reaction between the two cylinder is this area, area then what will be frictional force applied on this cylinder in downward direction that will be mu into r so frictional force is mu into r n means by this two cylinder a force cannot be transmitted which is more than this mu into r n that is frictional force so only a value of force which is less than this can be supplied can be transmitted so conclusion is that if force transmitted is p so if this P is less than mu into R n, if this P transmitted force is less than mu into R n, then there will be pure rolling from cylinder 1 to 2, R between cylinder 1 and 2. So there will be a pure rolling, there will be a pure rolling, but if the power transmission or force transmission goes on increasing, that is this force transmitted becomes more than this mu into r n this mu into r n then the slipping will occur then the slipping between these two cylinder will occur slipping between these two cylinder will occur so conclusion is that when power or force transmission is in, transmission is less then can be transmitted from one cylinder to the another cylinder as the power transmission or force transmission goes on increasing, goes on increasing, then the slipping between the two cylinder will occur. Slipping between the two cylinder will occur. So that is the problem that we cannot transmit high power, high force, high torque from the friction well. So what we can do? I have the solution for that. What we can do for this? Let us avoid the slipping. How how the slipping can be avoided? By making a projection on this by making a projection on this cylinder similarly making the projection on this cylinder so as so as on we are making the uh, projection on whole of the surface here also we are making projection on this cylinder on whole surface okay so now this uh, projection will not allow the slipping this projection on the gear on the friction will not allow the slipping means Slipping has been avoided. Slipping has been avoided by making the projection on the surface of the friction cylinder. So this friction cylinder with the projection. So this friction cylinder 
with the projection with the projection friction cylinder with the projection is known as the gear or toothed gear is known as the gear or toothed gear gear or toothed gear so this friction friction cylinder with the projection is known as the gear and this projection this projection is known as the tooth of the gear this projection is known as the tooth of the gear so this projection of the tooth and this friction cylinder with the projection is known as the gear so this is the idea development of the gear that how we have how we have moved from the friction cylinder to the so what is the need for that so why we have developed why we have gone gone to up to the gear because i want to transmit more power more force more torque so for that the gear is needed gear is needed okay now let us uh, derive some kinematic relation for this so for the for the for pure rolling for pure rolling if this is the friction cylinder then for the pure rolling if these two are the gear then there will be no slipping so for the gear also this is applicable so for the pure rolling this is the point of contact q say this point is q so this point q is on the gear 1 and on the gear 2 both so velocity of the point q will be same either we consider on the gear 1 or we consider on the gear 2 so this velocity of point q will be same either we consider on the gear 1 or on the gear 2 So VQ1 is equal to VQ2 when we are considering on the one. So this will be what radius of that gear, which circular radius of that gear or friction will R1 into its angular velocity omega1. Omega1 is equal to when we are considering on the on the wheel two, then velocity of point Q will be its radius R2 into its angular velocity omega2. omega 2 so what we are getting from here this omega 2 divided by omega 1 is equal to r1 divided by r2 so this diameter of the gear d is equal to 2r so this also can be written as this d1 divided by d2 d1 divided by d2 so omega 2 beta to omega 1 is equal to r1 beta to r2 r we can write d1 beta to D two, D one beta K D two, and also we have omega is equal to this two pi n divided by sixty. So this two by sixty is constant. So omega two is equal to this into y two omega one. So this into y one. When we divide, we will get this omega two divided by omega one is equal to this y two divided by y one. Let us combine this and this equation together. Then we are getting this omega two divided by omega one is equal to this y two divided by y one is equal to this diameter of the cylinder one but I get diameter of the cylinder two. I am having one more correlation for the gear. For the correct machining of the gear, the circular piece should be same. That is PC one is equal to PC two. PC one is equal to PC two. What is this PC? PC the circular piece. So circular piece of both the gears should be same for the correct machining. Circular piece PC is defined as circular piece PC is defined as this pi into d beta k t. So d is the piece circular diameter of the gear or diameter of the friction wheel beta k number of teeth on the gear. Okay, so we can write this as pi d one divided by t one for the one is equal to this pi d two for the two. So pi d2 divided by t2, pi pi has gone. So what we are getting from here, this d1 divided by d2 is equal to d1 by divided by d2 is equal to this uh, uh, t1 t1. Sorry, this t1 divided by t2. So d1 divided by d2 is equal to t1 divided by t2. Now let us see. Let us see. So this d1 by d2 also can be written as. Also can be written as this uh, T1 divided by T2. T1 by divided by T2. So we have got a very good kinematic relation, which is very, 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 very important. 
this is very very important let us see what is the use or applicability of this so this can be applied for any kind of gearing any kind of gearing and also we can apply for the friction wheel but condition is pure rolling so with the pure rolling then you can apply otherwise you can not apply so for the friction wheel with pure rolling and for the gearing any kind of gearing we can apply this kinematic relation let us see actually what is this omega 2 beta ki omega 1 actually this is the velocity ratio this is what the velocity ratio let us see what is the velocity ratio velocity ratio velocity ratio vr velocity ratio vr let us assume that this one is the driver gear or wheel and this is the driven this is the driver this is the driven one is the driver two is the driven so generally velocity ratio is defined as speed or velocity of the driven beta ke velocity of the driver speed of the driven beta ke speed of the driver so velocity ratio is equal to omega 2 beta ke omega so this is the general definition and sometimes also we can define this omega 1 beta ke omega 2 that is driver speed beta ke driven speed but mostly this is defined in that way that speed of the driven beta ke speed of the driver so velocity ratio omega 2 beta ke omega 1 from this kinematic relation we can write that velocity ratio vr is equal to omega 2 beta ke omega 1 is equal to this n2 divided by n1 is equal to this P circle diameter D1 beta ke P circle diameter D2 is equal to number of teeth on gear 1 beta ke number of teeth on gear 2. So we are getting this again another kinematic relation for the velocity ratio. So velocity ratio of this uh, friction wheel in pure rolling condition after this two uh, gear in mesh omega 2 beta ke omega 1 n2 beta ke n1 is equal to D1 beta ke D2 is equal to T1 beta ke T2. So this is the for the velocity ratio one more term is uh, sometimes used at, at the place of velocity ratio that is the gear ratio that is what the gear ratio let us see what is the gear ratio generally it is denoted by capital G it is denoted by capital G so what is the gear ratio G it is the number of teeth on the gear number of teeth on the gear so who is gear who is pinion bigger one is gear and a smaller one is pinion so bigger one is the uh, gear smaller one is pinion if this is the case of uh, internal gearing the inner gear is known as the annular gear or annular sphere so number of teeth on the gear are annular capital T divided by number of teeth on the pinion a smaller gear so number of teeth on the pinion a smaller gear so gear ratio G is equal to number of teeth on the annular or gear but like number of teeth on the pinion. So this is the gear ratio. Sometimes gear ratio is equal to velocity ratio and sometimes gear ratio is equal to 1 by velocity ratio. This depends upon that who is driver, who is driven. Who is driver, who is driven. So there are two cases. Let us see the first case. When gear is driver and the pinion is driven, one gear is driven and the two pinion is driver. So this is the driver, this is driven. So what will be velocity ratio? Vr is equal to velocity ratio will be this omega 2 beta k omega 1. Omega 2 beta k omega 1 is equal to num in the term of number of this t1 beta k t2. t1 beta k t2, t1 beta k t2. Let us see that one is uh, large and the two is uh, small. So this will be gear, this will be pinion. So this T1 is equal to capital T and this T2 will be equal to small T because this is the smaller, this is the pinion gear. So when you put, uh, put this, you are getting this capital T beta K small T that is equal to gear. So when the gear is driver, pinion is driven, we are getting velocity ratio, VR is equal to gear ratio. Let us see the another situation when the pinion is driver and the gear is driven. One is pinion, two is gear. So this pinion is driver and the two is, uh, one is pinion is driver and the two gear is uh, driven. Then what we are getting for this, let us see. So what will be velocity ratio for this? This is driver, this is driven. 
सो वेलोसिटी रेशियो भी आर इज इक्वल टू दिस ओमेगा टू बटा के ओमेगा वन फ्रॉम द काइनेमेटिक रिलेशन वी कैन राइट दिस टी वन डिवाइडेड बाय टी टू सो दिस टी वन दिस इज पीरियन सो इस माल टी and the t2 is equal to capital t because this is the gear number of teeth on the gear i am taking capital t number of teeth on the pinion i am taking small t so this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by small t beta k capital t this can be replaced by Another case when the pinion is driver, gear is driven, then we are getting velocity ratio is equal to one by g. So velocity. Let us uh, do some conclusion. Let us do some conclusion. So what we are concluding? What we are concluding that? Okay. Gear ratio g is capital T beta k small t number of teeth on the gear beta k number of teeth on the pinion so always number of teeth on the gear will be more than pinion so this g is always greater than r equal to 1 when the size of both the gear are when the size of both the gear are same then g is equal to 1 otherwise we are getting g is greater than 1 but this velocity ratio vr can be greater than 1 Can be less than one or can be equal to one. When the size of both the gear are same, then we can get velocity ratio is equal to one. Otherwise, we will get velocity ratio greater than one or we will get velocity ratio less than one. This depend upon who is driver, who is driven. That means gear is driver or pinion is driver. Okay, let us see some another advantage of. Gear drive. What is the another advantage? Key point is that uh, this is very compact and a positive drive. This is very, uh, uh, this is very compact and a positive drive. What does mean by positive drive? If the power of motion can be transmitted without slipping, then we are saying that is a positive drive. So for the gearing, there is no slipping. So that is known as the positive drive. Another thing is that this is very, uh, this is very compact. Means a very small size gearbox can transmit a high power. Yeah, high force and a high torque. Okay, so that is the another benefit. One thing more: <coughs> motion transmitted by the gear. Motion transmitted by the gear is kinematically equivalent to motion transmitted by the two friction cylinder. Two friction cylinder. Okay.